So Congress says that the US jobs report that came in on Friday was an embarrassment. They were expecting 1 million new jobs, but the report came in with only 266,000. Republicans say that this is due to the increased amount of federal unemployment benefits that the American people are receiving, but Democrats say no. This is just another example of why Congress must pass President Biden's $4.1 trillion infrastructure package. We know California Governor Gavin Newsom is proposing a comeback plan for the state that would provide even more residents with a $600 stimulus check and eligible dependents would also receive a $500 stimulus check as well. President Biden is now saying that Americans must take a job if they are offered a job or they will lose all their benefits. And the FDA, as of today, has approved Pfizer's vaccine for children children as young as 12 years old. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful Monday. If you are, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. The likes really do help out the channel. And again, let's jump into the rest of this update. I wanna fill you in on all the details because this is actually pretty important, not only for a $600 check in California and a $500 stimulus check in California, but for a fourth stimulus check across the country. Plus, this could actually be that turning point for many states to simply say, you know what, it's too difficult, I can't do it anymore. We are just going to stop and cancel all federal unemployment benefits and we are just gonna provide the state benefits that we have. That could turn into a big issue. But here's what we know. First, Republicans are saying that the federal unemployment benefits are causing people to not go back to work and they have been saying this for over a year. Democrats have been saying for about a year that this is not the case. This wasn't the case when we provide the $600 stimulus checks or the $600 unemployment boost. This wasn't the case when we provided $300 back in September and you're know, clear until now, but why is it now turning into an issue? Well, what we are hearing is that the reason it's turning into an issue now is because the states are starting to open up. The states are starting to, you know, bring back their these jobs. You know, the restaurant industry is doing a little bit better. The 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 hospitality industry, you know, consumer spending is up in some cases. And so this is all turning into a really good thing. However, if there's no employees at the place of business to work, the business can't open. And here's what President Biden came out and said today. And I quote, we're going to make it clear to anybody collecting unemployment who is offered a suitable job, they must take the job or lose their unemployment benefits. He also went on to say, we'll insist that the law is followed with respect to benefits, but we're not going to turn our backs on the fellow Americans. 22 million people lost their jobs in this pandemic through no fault of their own. For many of those folks, unemployment benefits are a lifeline, which is 100% true. For many of you who are currently unemployed, yes, it is a lifeline. You need that money. But what some are saying, and there are actually, there's actually evidence that does say that some people, and not all, some people are turning down suitable jobs, a job that they've had in the past. They're turning it down because they can stay at home and make a little bit more. There's evidence of that. But there's also evidence in some states that say that no, to staying at home is not the reason why people are not going back to work. It is simply because the work conditions, the work conditions, or they are staying at home because the school that their child goes to hasn't opened. They don't have childcare. There's no school. So they have to stay home anyways. So why go get a job and take the money that they're earning and go pay somebody else that exact same, you know, the money that they're earning, you know, every single penny of it, why would they go do that when they could stay at home, collect unemployment benefits, and continue to homeschool their child? So there's a lot of issues going on right now. Republicans are going to say one thing. Democrats are going to say another. But who's right? Honestly, nobody really knows. And then President Biden had this statement uh, that he's, you know, he's kind of talking about how Republicans, and, and he, again, he does not want to um, you know, come out and say that Republicans have been right. The Biden administration does not want that. They will do whatever it takes, but they do not want the American people to believe that they've been wrong. Okay, This will be devastating to the Democratic Party in the upcoming midterm elections. But here's what President Biden ended his statement with today. He said, and I quote, 
No one should be allowed to game the system and will insist the law is followed, but let's not take our eye off the ball. We need to stay focused on the real problems in front of us, beating this pandemic and creating jobs. And I think that's what everybody wants. Let me know down in the comment section below. Are you tired of this pandemic? Are you tired of going to a restaurant and having to wait in line because you can't actually get in due to capacity limits? Are you tired of going to, let's say, a, a Costco or a Target? And it's the same thing. You can't go to a certain register to go and check out because there's, there's too many people. You have to stay six feet or three feet apart. And so you gotta go to some other register. You'll clear down the, clear down the way or something that has a bigger line. Are you tired of all this? Are you tired of you know, trying to go to a park, but the park is closed because of this pandemic? Are you tired? Let me know down in the comment section below. Are you okay with how the pandemic is turning out or do you just want this to end completely? Let me know. Love to hear your answers and your responses down in the comment section below. So after President Biden gave these statements, first off, the media ate him up. They ate this up. And the media is not believing a word that he said because experts are now talking about how more states will be getting rid of the federal unemployment benefits. Just like Montana and South Carolina. I reported this a couple days ago, uh, or maybe it was yesterday, can't remember. But I reported this the other day that two states are now canceling their federal unemployment benefits a little bit early, about two months early. The Montana will be canceling their unemployment benefits on June 27th. South Carolina will be canceling theirs on June 30th. What we know is that according to experts, some states are going to follow suit because of the administrative complexities behind verifying a job offer or not. So what we know is if an employer you know, goes and offers somebody a job okay, and they decide, no, I'm going to turn it down. That's fine. They do not have to accept it. But then the employer, it's their responsibility to then go and call the unemployment office, okay, based on what I, you know, the, the reports I've heard and kind of the situation behind it. But their responsibility is to go and call the unemployment office and let them know, hey, Billy, you know, Smith, you know, over in, you know, uh, you know Seattle, Washington, uh, I offered him a job and he turned it down. And then the administra the uh, unemployment office can be like, okay, well, well, Billy Smith, you know, he shouldn't get any unemployment benefits. Well, how many Billy Smiths are in Washington State? Well, that's where the administrative complexities start to kind of, you know, wrap up. It's like, okay, we got to figure out who this is, make sure it's the right person, and if it's the wrong person, and we cancel somebody else's benefits. Well, they're pretty much screwed. Okay, so this is what we're hearing, and this is why, according to experts, some states will be following suit with Montana and South Carolina very soon. Chances are we're going to see more this week. Potentially, it will happen over the course of this month. But this also brings up the question, if we do not get unemployment benefits, then what is there? Then what? How are we going to pay our bills? How are we going to provide you know, the essentials for myself and my family? What can I do? Well, this is where states are most, most likely going to offer smaller stimulus checks on a state-by-state -state basis. Whether or not we get a stimulus check from the government, the federal government, honestly, who knows? It's really up in the air right now. But will states offer an additional check? Will states offer additional uh, rental assistance and provide 100% of the payment? Or what will other states actually provide? Well, here's where I want to dive into California because California, as of today, their governor, Gavin Newsom, has stated that he's planning a $100 billion comeback plan for the state. First, he wants to expand eligibility of the Golden State stimulus checks of $600. He wants to make it where roughly two thirds of residents in California are going to be eligible to receive this check. And he wants to include $500 to qualifying families with dependents, including undocumented families. Some are gonna argue that this is not right. We shouldn't be uh, providing any money to undocumented families. However, this is exactly what his plan is to do. And he wants to increase the rental and utility assistance through the state as well. As of right now, according to the most recent reports, the federal government has not sent out any money of the $350 billion that was allocated to state and local governments, none of that money has been sent out. It is supposed to be coming out very soon, but who knows when it's actually gonna come. So up until now, many places across the United States have been difficult to deal with trying to get rental assistance through. 
And I just want you to understand that right now, some are calling this the turning point to assistance. Some say with the potential housing and eviction crisis coming, it makes sense that states are willing to do whatever they can now in order to prevent a massive amount of evictions to take place in the near future. So one thing I can tell you at this point is everything that I have read lately is pretty much talking about additional relief. Will it be an additional stimulus check? Possibly. In my opinion, honestly, I think there's a higher likelihood that we do receive a stimulus check, but like I've been saying before, it's gonna be disguised as something else potentially a child tax credit or an increase to the child tax credits. Okay, so instead of maybe a uh, $3,600 child tax credit, they raise it to 4,200, and which is an additional 600 bucks for every single child. But by raising it, that's essentially a stimulus check to the children. However, they're not calling it a stimulus check. We also know there's a parent tax credit on the table. There's you know other things like that. You know, uh, you know, tax credits for child care and other things as well. So we're going to see what happens there. But as of right now, what I can tell you is we're going to see additional tax cuts. Uh, we're going to see tax credits. We're going to see, uh, you know, other things, rental assistance, nutrition assistance, you know, uh, utility assistance. There's going to be other things as well that's going to be coming your way. But as of right now, what we are hearing is eventually more relief is going to come. Some say it might not happen in the infrastructure package, but that is because the infrastructure package might have too many faults and not enough Democrats are going to vote for this. So we will see what happens. But as of right now, there's a lot on the table. And as we get more details, I promise I will fill you in on all the latest news and updates. But Let's get into the COVID news for today. This is actually pretty big. The FDA said it is amending the emergency use authorization to include the millions of children aged 12 to 15 years old. Previously, before today, it was only able, if you were 16 years old or older, you were able to get the, the Pfizer vaccine. However, that is not the case. They actually changed it. And this is what experts have been saying is needed in order to get the United States into herd immunity before the middle to end of the summer. The acting FDA commissioner, she also had this to say today, and I quote, Parents and guardians can rest assured that the agency undertook a rigorous and thorough review of all available data, as we have with all of our COVID-19 vaccine emergency youth authorizations. So, if you have a 12 to 15 year old, let me know down in the comment section below. Will you be allowing them to go and get this vaccine or are you going to wait? I know a lot of people are simply just going to wait and see how does this vaccine really play out. Are people dying? Uh, are people actually being, uh, is this vaccine working and is it effective against the transmission of COVID? It is, it is effective, but what are the, the symptoms? Are the symptoms, do those symptoms, you know, and getting those for a few days, do those outweigh, you know, the benefits? You know, and that's what a lot of people are questioning. And so I just want to know, let me know down in the comment section below, are you going to get the vaccine or are you going to allow a child between the ages of 12 and 15 to go and get it as well? I'd be curious to hear your answers and your responses as well. So that is what we know right now. But as always, as I know more, I promise I'll come back on and share more. I just want to thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday afternoon and night. Again, thank you guys for watching. Hit that thumbs up button. It really does help out the channel. Consider subscribing so I can continue to keep you updated on everything that's going on. And I'll see you guys on the next one.